Hello and welcome to our introductory to PHP web developing tutorials. In this video we're just going to highlight some of the things about PHP that you should know before you get started. We're also going to look at some of the things that you need to get started. To begin with, PHP is a recursive acronym. PHP stands for PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. So the, the first P in PHP means PHP. PHP is a server-side scripting language, which means that it, the actual PHP lives on the server side. You can look at HTML, so which we learned in previous videos, as more of a client-side language. It's interpreted by the browser on the client side, meaning this, the user's browser handles that HTML. PHP is executed by the server. Also, the PHP code is executed before anything is sent to the user's browser. And the user's browser receives mainly HTML, and JavaScript, and CSS. As a result, the user's browser doesn't receive the PHP code itself. PHP is only there as a preprocessor on the server side. It's a translated language, meaning that it's not compiled. It's translated on the fly. So when a PHP file is executed on the server, a PHP on the server runs through the file and executes it right there on the spot without having to compile to machine code. It's easier to maintain. You don't have to compile the, the code. You don't have to link anything to it. It's, it's automatically done on the fly by the computer that runs the actual server software. PHP supports a lot of different databases. That includes PostgreSQL, MySQL, SQLite, a lot of different database types. And your databases are there to store your data. If you are confused a little bit about what the databases are for, we're going to go into that in a lot of detail or at least enough to get you going. And we'll be using MySQL as a basis for our tutorials. It's a, a much a very widely known and widely used SQL database engine and or database management system I should say. It's readily available and it's actually it actually comes installed with the, the software that we're going to use, which I'll get into that in just a moment. But just know that PHP supports a lot of different types of databases. Most people I would say use MySQL or PostgreSQL with PHP for their database back end. The databases are used to store like if you for instance if you had a blog, your blog posts the actual post, the articles that you type into your blog and save would be stored into a database table. Another thing that you can use databases for would be like a user management system. So if you had a site that had a lot of had user accounts, all of your user information is stored in the database. And those are, you have to have a database to store information. You can't do that just with HTML because HTML has no facilities to actually connect to the database. And since the database usually lives on the server, well, it, it can live on the server that your web server's on. It's available to your PHP code that way. Your HTML, since it's client-side, can't really access that database directly. So you have to pull the information from the database using PHP and then deliver the output to the user's browser in HTML. PHP is also open source meaning that you can actually open up the source code for PHP and see how it's written. It's free software in that regard, where it's free to see the source code and modify it if you want to. You probably won't be doing that, but it's an important note about PHP that it's also very cross-platform compatible, so it, it can be used on Windows, Linux, Mac, many other things. It's one of the most widely used. It's easy to learn. That's one of the reasons it's so widely used, is because it's, it's a very easy language to pick up, especially for a beginner. So the, wh what are you going to need for your developing environment? One thing, you're going to need a web server. You can't, in the previous videos where we just opened up our HTML files and opened them up into the browser and it, and it read them just fine, you can't do that with PHP because PHP has to be executed. You have to actually have a PHP server. And we'll be installing a version of Apache which has PHP built in and it's, it's made for Windows. It's called a XAMPP installation from Apache friend and friends. Our Apache friends. It comes with Apache, PHP, and it'll it'll run from your local computer. So your Windows machine will be your web server. Now, in order for the outside world to see that, you could use a like a dynamic DNS host name and let them access it from there. But you'll have to to do all that. You'd have to do some routing changes with your router and a lot of things like that. So the outside world probably won't be able to see your web pages, but they, the point to install on the web server is so that you can execute your PHP code and you can see the results. For this to actually to actually use this on a live website, you would have to put your files on a web server that's accessible from the world for the world to see. You'd have to have it. You'll have to create a domain or buy a domain name and, and either 
purchase some hosting or well that's about the, the best options could purchase some hosting and then put your website on the host on your hosting account something else you're going to need is an editor we've been using notepad plus plus to edit our pages for html and you can use notepad plus plus for for everything that we're going to do but we will be using well, we're going to switch things up a little bit we're going to start using netbeans netbeans is a great full featured IDE that can be used to edit or create applications in many different languages. It has great PHP support and it's, one, it's my favorite editor and I'm going to be using it for all the tutorials. And you'll see some of the advantages of using NetBeans to using just a regular editor like Notepad or Notepad++. NetBeans is a an IDE, which is an integrated developing environment. It doesn't just do editing. It does have a great editor, but it also has things like IntelliSense or code completion, and it, it has a debugger. We'll be using that with our PHP a little bit. Let's just show how you can debug your PHP on the fly. So during this process, while we're learning PHP, you might want to look for places to find help. You might be interested in how you can find help. Well, you can look on our forums on our website or you can and check out our articles on the website as well there's if you want help with PHP the, probably the best place to get it is php.net it has a complete documentation for the language it tell, uh, there's lots of help there mysql.com has a lot of documentation for SQL and if you're new to SQL in general uh, you m we'll be going over SQL and, and how to query and and do all the things that you need to do with SQL but if you need more help with that then you can do some Google searches to find other tutorials on MySQL especially but for specific syntax help MySQL.com is a great place to go it'll teach you all the intricacies the details of MySQL to get help with Apache there's HTTP D dot Apache dot com or dot work sorry and there's some documentations there for our documentation there for Apache. There's not a lot that you have to change with a with a default exam install of Apache, but later on whenever you branch out into a, a hosting environment and you're wanting to do things like, for instance, read out, rewriting a URLs to be prettier or something, you might want to look at mod rewrite and things like that. This would be a good place to reference that. At the moment, you don't have to change the configuration of Apache. It's going to be set up out of the box to work pretty well. And as always, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, all these languages, there's great tutorials for them at w3schools.com. If we don't cover something that you want to know about, chances are W3Schools has that information. So in the next videos, uh, which are going to be video 1.5a and 1.5b, I've divided these up into two, two separate videos. We're just going to install NetBeans and we're going to install the web server environment. They're, they're not going to be very long. If setting up the, the web server may be a little bit longer, but it's going to be pretty straightforward. And I've put these on here. Well, they're they're in one point five and not version. They're not video two because video two is going to go straight into starting out with PHP. And uh, these are one point five because there's preparatory videos and you don't even actually have to watch them if you've already got NetBeans and Zamp installed. The default installs of both of those are pretty pretty much what we're going to be using. So they're just there for reference, so that you the people who are coming into this with that have never used NetBeans, never used Zamp. They can reference these videos and see how they're installed, and then they'll have it set up perfectly. So if you've never used NetBeans, never used uh, Xamp, then please watch those videos and see how they're set up. So enjoy the PHP. It's going to be fun. And I'll see you on the next video. Please subscribe.